Is there a memory that stands out to you right now in this moment? Oh, um, I mean, probably equal pay chance um, after the final. Um, and I think, you know, they were saying equal pay, but could have been saying a lot of things. I think this team has always fought for so much more, and uh, that's been the most rewarding part for me, of course, playing in World Cups and winning championships and doing all that. But, um, you know, to know that we've used our really special talent to do something you know that's really like changed the world forever i think that means the most to me and you know the players in this locker room here um they're just getting started and you know to all the players that i played with obviously um you know who know what it's like to be in the grind um that's the best part boy oh boy oh boy oh boy oh boy we got to talk about the woke u.s women's soccer team once again following their embarrassing loss in the world cup as Megan Rapino missed a penalty kick uh, that could potentially win the game. Now, again, she completely airballed the kick. Okay, maybe, just maybe, she thought that she was a man and she was playing American football, right? And she was kicking a field goal. Okay, that's what it looked like. It looked more like a field goal uh, than a penalty kick attempt, right? Uh, probably one of the most embarrassing, if not the most embarrassing moments of her career. And when asked about her favorite memory, or I guess her favorite accomplishment or whatever, when it comes to her playing career, which is over, right? It went out in the saddest, most pathetic way possible, right? Very fitting for somebody like her, for the blue hair, Wolk Rascal. She claimed equal pay, right? Equal pay, okay? AKA getting paid more money than what she deserves because she allegedly has a vagina is one of her proudest accomplishments okay not actually winning not anything that has to do with her play on the field and people wonder why this team lost right this team lost because they were more concerned about wokeness and off the field issues than they were concerned about their play on the field and even soccer legends like uh alexi lalas and carly lloyd could see this right and they were calling this out particularly Carly Lloyd, doing um, the World Cup, right, in which she received criticism for uh, rightly criticizing the U.S. women's soccer team for kiki and ha ha and celebrating after almost getting eliminated, before getting eliminated, right? Uh, because, you know, she used to play for the team. She wasn't as woke as the other players. And she just kind of knows that their head is not in the game, okay? Their head is not in the game, and the culture of that team is not good. It is not conducive for producing winners. You better than anybody have experienced this team for a number of years on and off the field and what it is and what it isn't and the way that you see it right now. When you look at this team, especially in the cold, harsh light of day of going out in the round of 16, historically the worst finish of any women's national team in a World Cup. What are some of the things that you either see now or you saw when you were with the team that in that moment you said, this is not going to end well? Well, I think when I first got onto the team, there was just a level of respect for everybody there, for coaches, for other players, um, for support staff, you know, massages, trainers, doctors. And as the years have kind of gone by, it's it's little stuff, but it kind of amounts to uh, big things and ultimately, you know, affects, affects on the field. But, you know, if you've got a massage, let's say, for example, you, your name's signed up on a certain time and you decide to not show up and you decide to not text the massage therapist or tell them, hey, I'm running a few minutes late. Um, and they're just sitting there and they have to just sit there and they have to kind of swallow that and not really say anything to the player that's done that. So there's just things like that. It's like, you know, trash around the field. It's throwing your warm up and expecting the equipment guy. It's just, there's a level of, I guess, not everybody, but there's a level of just kind of the entitlement of everybody's going to do everything for you and just not being respectful of others. And I think that that starts at the top and that should be the coach and that should be the leader and then it should funnel on down to the, the players. Well, I mean, you're talking about responsibility and respect ultimately. And, and that, I think when, when people hear that, 
they can relate because you know, look, you're you're a legend and you have lived at an elite level from a sporting perspective for so long. And we try to get a glimpse into who you are as an athlete. But th there are a lot of things that you're talking about that apply to life. And, and you know, we all deal with the with with the sporting world, but we also deal with the business world and little things matter. You know, they say don't sweat the small stuff. And yes, there are things that you don't need to worry about. But there are little things that accumulate over time, and they can be detrimental to whatever that goal is. And so I'm glad that you, that you were able to give some real concrete details here rather than kind of talking an abstraction, uh, because I think it's important. And that's a wonderful example right, right there that kind of illustrates what I think is some of the frustration that you see. Because all of the stuff that you talk about, it comes from a good place, I think. And I don't, want to, yeah, I don't want to speak for you. It comes from a good place. You want this team to do well. You want this team not only to live up to the past, but to do even better. But when you see things, and this isn't you grumpy old woman in it or any, by any stretch of the imagination, but these little things, they do matter going forward. And so I'm, I'm glad that you uh, said that. Mossy, there's anything? A, there's a ton more. But That's all right. That's, it, again, it just, it, it, the respect We want to let you sleep tonight. We don't, you know, we yeah, can't go on. We, we could be here all night. Yeah, responsibility and respect, okay? And we're going to talk more about that and why it matters. And I think why this U.S. women's soccer team story is such a polarizing story in the sense that it, you you can take away some real-life lessons from this team losing. And I, and I want to talk about it because what they're talking about there uh, really can apply to the average person, okay? Especially when you're talking about being in the corporate world, okay, being in the workforce, right, and what matters, what is going to put you ahead of uh, your colleagues in regards to getting to the next level in your career. Uh, I think some of that stuff definitely really applies, right, when it comes to just being successful in general, right? But first, again, we got to talk more about some of the backlash, okay, because Alexi Lalas, who is a soccer legend in his own right, he's in the uh, men's soccer hall of fame or he's in the national soccer hall of fame because he played for uh the men's national team he's accomplished in his own right uh he took to x formerly known as twitter to uh discuss the u.s women's team uh losing to sweden right and says quote don't kill the messenger this u.s women's soccer team is polarizing politics causes stances and behavior have made this team unlikable to a portion of America. This team has built its brand and has derived its power from being the best slash winning. If that goes away, they risk becoming irrelevant. The retired uh, soccer star turned Fox sports analyst post it. Yeah. So, again, what he's talking about here is a sentiment that a lot of people have in this country, particularly for these women because they disrespected the national anthem, right? They clearly don't really like our country that much and again they're more focused on politics and off the field things rather than their play and a lot of people think that this wokeness is the reason why they got eliminated so early and i think that that is the reason as well too however cnn uh got triggered by this and uh actually did a whole segment about whether or not wokeness actually led to the u.s women's soccer team losing where they clearly clearly are upset uh, with Mr. Lawless's comments. Take a look. This team has a inspired sort of a flood of armchair analysts who are chiming in, including people who know nothing about yes. soccer, some who do. Uh, former <laughs> President Donald Trump uh, posted a, a rant on True Social. He said in part, woke equals failure. Uh, the former U.S. men's national team player turned commentator Alexi Lawless tweeted, don't kill the messenger. This team is polarizing. Politics, causes, stances, and behavior have made this team unlikable to a portion of America. I mean, we should note uh, that his record, if you put it up against, say, uh, Megan Rapinoe's, it pales quite in comparison. Uh, but what do you say to critics yes. who are saying that this is a team that lost because they're too woke? Or, or are they just, do, I mean, is there, what do you think about that? I completely disagree. I, I think the reason that this team was unable to do the greatness that it's used to doing has nothing to do with any of the things that these people mentioned. I think that having so many rookies on the team in positions of expectation of carrying the team with uh, Sophia Smith, for example, Trinity Rodman up top, expecting them to score a bunch of goals when it's their first time playing on a national team major tournament. Um, Vladko playing you know, different lineups a lot. I don't think it has anything to do with 
the amazing achievements that we have done off the pitch and the way that we have as a group stood up for those who can't speak up for themselves. That's something that we have done for 30 years and obviously has not been something that has hindered us in winning championships. We will win again, whether it's in the Olympic Games or the World Cup. In the future, we will. And we are the standard bearers for women all over this world. And if that's what it takes to be able to help other women in this country and other countries stand up and, and fight for what they deserve, then I, for one, am very proud of being someone who does that. And I hope the team will continue to do so. And I will do my part in that as well. Yeah, so what I find to be amazing about that segment from CNN is that you have Brianna Kellar, who is basically trying to take shots at President Trump for allegedly not knowing anything about soccer and being an armchair analyst. When she puts up a infographic comparing the career of Alexi Lawless and Megan Rapinoe in the World Cup when they played two different positions. Uh, Alexi Lawless was a defender, okay, and... Um, Megan Rapino is a winger. Okay, so she is an offensive player. So of course she's gonna score more goals, right? Uh, of course she's gonna have more opportunity for assists. She's gonna accumulate uh more statistics than Alexi Lawless because they play different positions. Now comparing their World Cup titles and the games played. Again, it is kind of like comparing apples to oranges because I would imagine that you know being on a men's team it is much harder to win, to actually win a World Cup uh, than it is for the U.S. women's team, okay? Because the competition among men is probably much more intense, okay, uh, than the competition among women, right? Which is why people are so disappointed. They get much more disappointed when the U.S. women team loses because you're expected to win, right? You were expected to win. Now, again, with the men's team, is a little bit different because, again, the competition is steeper, right? I mean, again, you have... Uh, football being the most popular sport in the world. Uh, and you have a lot of these countries that, again, their whole culture is nothing but football, 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 and they're producing the best players uh, in the world, right? So again, it's a little bit different for the men's team. Obviously, we should uh, want them to win. We should cheer for them. But again, it's just, they just don't have as high expectations just because, again, the competition is much steeper. So that being said, I think what Carly Lloyd and... Alexi Lawless uh, was saying was was just on point about uh, the U.S. women's soccer team and how in real life you can take away lessons from the consequences of wokeness because I don't think wokeness just encompasses uh, far left social political issues. I think that's a lot of what it encompasses, right? But it also encompasses just a move away from traditional values, right? And, and that even goes... Uh, towards a, a moving away from like traditional work culture, right? Traditional work culture in the sense that, you know, people took pride in how they look when they showed up to work, uh, you know, what, it, what time they come into work, uh, staying late, paying attention to detail, uh, just doing all the little things that it takes to be successful and to uh, move up in, you know, the corporate world or in the workforce, right? And what Carly Lloyd was talking about in regards to the U.S. women's soccer team not showing up on time for, you know, certain appointments, whether that be with the trainer or just leaving their stuff around for, I guess, the trash people to pick up or the assistants to pick up and just not really paying that much attention to detail, not seeming to really care about the little things, the small things, which do add up. Again, I think that that definitely can apply to regular normal life and again when you're in the workforce how important that it is that you do pay attention to the little things right that you do come into work on time that you do uh make sure that you're doing all the little things that you need to do in order to differentiate yourself from your colleagues if you really want to be successful but again what we see in modern day work culture is that people really don't want to work right they're like hey i don't want to work eight, eight hours a day Right, I don't want to show to work, show up to work on time. Right, I shouldn't have to show up to work on time. I'm gonna quiet quit. Right, we we talked about this trend before that was happening, where people were saying, "Look, I'm just gonna show up to work, do the bare minimum." Right, which is what they call quiet quitting. Okay, because they feel like they're not getting what they deserve for the amount of work that they put in, which again is a fair feeling. However, that doesn't mean that you should just 
stop working, right? Or, or to put in minimum effort because you're not going to get anywhere putting in minimum effort at your job, okay? Again, again, a lot of these people will turn around and complain about, you know, their colleagues, you know, getting ahead of them uh, when, again, they're not putting in the work, okay? And, um, you know, again, I, I think that a lot of the failures that we see from the U.S. women's soccer team, I think, can be applied to real life. Again, when you don't have your head in the game, okay, when you're more worried about outside forces than your actual job, okay, yeah, your job performance is going to be affected. And the U.S. women's soccer team, they were more worried about getting equal pay, right, equal pay for a lesser quality product. They are more worried about LGBTQ rights. They are more worried about pushing the Democrat agenda, Okay, more so than actually doing what they're paid to do, because the only reason they have a platform, the only reason that people even care about what they have to say, the only reason they're irrelevant is because they were once world champions. Right now, all of a sudden, when you're not world champions anymore, when you're not winning, all that stuff goes out the window. Right. <laughs> the, all that stuff goes out the window. What you say becomes a lot less relevant. You're not going to get the same kind of microphone and platform because you're not winning. This is why you need to put winning first. This is why you can't settle for mediocrity, right? It's not okay to just barely get by. You have to always be performing at a top level. You have to always be shooting for excellence, okay? If you're not winning, then you're losing, right? You need to always be trying to be number one, okay? You need to always be trying to outcompete your opponent in whatever you do in life, uh, because that's how you get ahead and that's how you stay ahead, right? But again, you know, like a lot of the things that we're seeing in the workforce in regards to people just not feeling like they have to really show up to work on their A game. You know, they don't have to be on time. They don't have to do this. They don't have to do that. Because you know what? F the man, right? Uh, I think you're kind of seeing some of those things show up with the U.S. women's soccer team. When you're not paying attention to details, when you're not caring about the environment around you, when you're not taking care of the little things, yeah, I, that shows up on the field, right? And lo and behold, again, I'm pretty sure some of those things probably translated to how they practiced, how they trained, right? And that's why they lost, right? That's why they lost, okay? So I definitely think that you can blame Wokeness. Uh, there's no excuse for why they lost, considering how they came in, ranked number one. They were expected to win. And when you don't win, yeah, people are going to have questions about, well, are you distracted, <laughs> right? What, what's going on? Right? Why did you not win? You were expected to win uh, despite you know the rookies on the team or whatever type of excuses that the woke CNN analyst wants to make. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.